Hello and welcome to TV News with some latest events across the country and general province. Ladies and gentlemen, on the afternoon of September 17, 2024, Prime Minister Phạm Minh Chính head up the State Steering Committee for important national projects and was key projects in the transport sector chaired the online conference of the 14th meeting of the Steering Committee. It was held online between the government headquarters and the connecting points of the provinces and city with key national projects and was at the name of there was Mr. Nguyen Thanh Ngoc, Deputy Secretary of the Provincial Party Committee, Chairman of the Provincial Business Committee. In his opening speech, the Prime Minister of Minh Chin emphasized that from now until the end of 2025, there are only about 15 months left. The workload is very large and therefore, ministries, branches and localities need to discuss solutions to speed up the progress and ensuring the quality of projects being implemented, apply the valuable experiences from the implementation of the 500 kilovolts power line project secrets number three and complete it in just six months. The Prime Minister analyzed the important significance of strategic transport infrastructure, in particular, Preliminary statistics show that Super Typhoon No. 3 caused damage of about 40 trillion Vietnam dong, and the Prime Minister of Minh Chin directed the task of promoting public investment disbursement, promoting three strategic breakthroughs, including the strategic breakthrough in transport infrastructure, which is an important political task, and also demonstrating national love, compatriots love, and to contribute to compensating for the damage caused by the storms and floods. The ministries, branches, and countries and enterprises must focus on working with the spirit and responsibility for the people and the country, saying this doing, committing to doing, and assigning tasks clearly to the people, clearly stating the work, and clearly stating the responsibility, clearly stating the time and pricing, and rewarding units that do well, handing cases of delay, Searching, avoiding responsibility and failure to complete the tasks according to regulations of the party and the state. On the morning of September 17, the Propaganda and Training Department of the Provincial Party Committee held the September Reporters Conference in 2024 with the attendance of Ms. Nguyen Thị Xuân Hương, member of the Provincial Party Standing Committee, head of Propaganda and Training Department. At the conference, the reporters heard a report on the implementation of the Ho Chi Minh City Mobile Expressway Compensation Support and Resettlement Project Route in Province. Part of the Ho Chi Minh City Mobile Expressway Construction Investment Project Phase 1 under the public private partnership model. Regarding the orientation of propaganda in the coming time, the propaganda and training department requested the propaganda department set on levels to focus on implementing a number of key tasks and propaganda work in September, directing, orienting, and organizing propaganda and mobilization work well, creating consensus and support from onwards of life in implementing the Ho Chi Minh City Mobile Expressway project, promptly updating information on the progress and results of land acquisition, compensation, support, and resettlement to carry party members and people, focusing on propaganda on local pages, groups, the internet, and social networks, Facebook, Zillow, YouTube, TikTok, etc. Other important foreign affairs and diplomatic activities of the party and state, from there, proactively fight against and refute false information, viewpoints, plus and trace a peaceful evolution of hostile forces in the new situation. Ladies and gentlemen, on the afternoon of September 17, at the Provincial Party Committee Hall, the Provincial Views Committee held a conference to evaluate the results of the Prime Index, CPAS, and deploy solutions to improve and enhance the indexes of the administrative system of the province in the form of online to the district town city bridges. Attending the provincial bridge, there were Mr. Phạm Minh Hùng, Director of the Department of Administrative Reform, Ministry of Home Affairs, Trip of Office of the Government Steering Committee for Administrative Reform, Mr. Phạm Hùng Thái, Standing Deputy Secretary of the Provincial Party Committee, Head of the Provincial National Assembly Delegation, Mr. Nguyen Thanh Ngoc, Deputy Secretary of the Provincial Party Committee, Chairman of the Provincial Bureau Committee. 
Speaking at a conference, the chairman of the Provincial People's Committee, Nguyen Thanh Ngoc, said that in 2023, the results of MS Trade Reform firm index and the satisfaction index of the people and organizations with the service of administrative agencies of the province, according to the assessment, are still low, and many contains and component criteria in the PIR index and CPOS indexes of the province are not effective, not meeting the requirements and expectations of the people and businesses. The content related to economic development policies, environmental management, land access, receiving and handling feedback and recommendations have low indexes, and there are still core civil servants and public employees with inappropriate communication and behavior, causing frustration in the citizens' contact and especially with the some areas such as the investment construction licensing, construction order management, renting land use price certificates. At the conference, Mr. Phan Minh Hung, Director of the Department of Administrative Reform, Ministry of Home Affairs, presented a number of solutions to improve the CPOS and the PAR index, such as improving the quality of construction, organizing the implementation of the administrative reform plan, improving the capacity of the standing agencies administrative reform linked with the implementation of digital transformation, focusing on policies and services that the people are interested in, improving the discipline and order in the performance of public duties. Turn to other news. On the morning of September 17, 2024, the survey team of the People's Council, led by Mr. Nguyễn Việt Cường, Deputy Head of the Department of Culture and Society, Provincial People's Council, conducted a survey on investment, procurement of medical equipment, and the situation of management and use of medical equipment, biting products and medical supplies at Tenant City Medical Center. The survey team of the Provincial People's Council also noticed some difficulties of the unit, such as some items have been defrighted and damaged, such as the housing area, fire prevention and fighting system, wastewater treatment system, oxygen system, and the information system for management and use of medical equipment is still limited. The technical human resources, but it's important in equipment maintenance and repair are still lacking. Staff participating in the equipment management have not received specialized training, and the number of medical staff who are resigned or transferred to other jobs has increased. On the same day, the Provincial People's Council survey team also visited the field hospital located at the Pedagogical College during the COVID-19 outbreak. Ladies and gentlemen, this year's UG Palace Banquet Festival, or Holy Banquet for Great Mother and the Night Goddesses, is different from previous years in that the situation of trading on the sidewalks of the inner city of Tenen Holiday is almost gone, which also has the roads to be more open, and groups of visitors and pilgrims do not have to endure traffic jams for hours. The festival not only attracts tens of thousands of followers of religion, but also many groups of visitors and pilgrims from the provinces and cities nationwide in and outside the country to attend. Previous year, groups of tourists coming to the Holy City had to just off or sit in cars for hours, and the course of which originated from street vendors selling on the sidewalks around the Nenkaulai Holy City. However, this year, those tolls are not allowed to sell, and the roads around the inner city of the Holy City are more open. According to the sharing of the people outside the province this year, there is no traffic jam and moving is easier. And when these stones are gone, the people are also proactively look for more reputable restaurants or choose to eat vegetarian food at the Taidun of the Gaudai Holy See to ensure the food hygiene and safety. In general, last year it was also congested, and this year is still open, and there are no more sidewalks for sale. And this year the arrangement here is fine. Every year I went to the stones and saw that they were not hygienic, but this year I went and saw that they were fine. There were no stones, but the people here gave the food enthusiastically, hygienically, and naturally, which was good. In addition, for some road leading to Tenen Kaurai Holy See, most of the vendors have neatly arranged their goods and displayed them 
properly. Then therefore, the tourists and the pedestrians have space to walk around instead of having to walk on the street like before. Hopefully, these small changes will continue to be maintained every year at the banquet festival of the UT Palace and contribute to the beauty of the Nankaurai Holy See as well as the success of the festival. The 2024 Holy Banquet Festival, one of the two important festivals of Gaudai religion during the year, was officially held on the afternoon of September 17, the 50th day of the Eight Lunar Men, with the attendance of the leaders coming from the Government Committee for Religious Affairs, the Department of Internal Security of the Ministry of Public Security, as well as the provincial leaders. The delegates visited the brochure display around the Mother Goddess Temple. This year, the festival has 118 stores of religious communities nationwide and foreign religious communities to display, attracting a large number of followers and tourists to visit and admire. Speaking at the congratulatory ceremony of the Holy Banquet, Ms. Le Nguyen Hong Tan, standing vice chairman of the Nen Provincial Peace Committee, acknowledged and raised the positive contributions of Gao Dai Holy See of Tenen and the entire religion to the social economic development of the country in general and the province in particular in recent times. In the last time, as activities have increasingly developed, closely linked and accompanied the nation at and the local parish management boards in the province have actively responded to social security activities launched by the Vietnam Federal and Branch Committees at all levels, taking care of the material life of the people, especially Gautai followers, to have the conditions to rise up in life and implementing well the patriotic emulation movements in the locality. A unique beauty of a time coming to the Holy Banquet is that the people around the Holy City area are kind and hospitable, ready to support free accommodation and cook free vegetarian meals to warm the hearts of visitors everywhere attending the ceremony. At the small house in Ninfuk Quarter, Nintan Ward, the city of Miss Dung Hill, who is affectionately called the sick aunt by visitors staying here. Currently, there are about 200 people staying for free during the UJ Palace Banquet. Until only providing accommodation, Miss Hill still creates the most comfortable conditions for visitors from all over the world. It's on from my heart. That's my intention. If you don't have a place to stay, come here and pray for two nights and two days. Today I'm happy, like my family has on a paternal and maternal relatives gathered here. Her enthusiasm and kind heart made visitors feel warm and welcome warmly throughout the banquet, making the festival more meaningful and memorable for visitors than ever. I'm really grateful. Thank you, Ange, for giving my sister love. And when I come here, all my brothers and sisters in the Holy Land of the Supreme Being are favored and love like that. Not only providing great accommodation, many people living around the Tenen Holy City area also organized to cook zero Vietnam Dung vegetarian meals for visitors. The atmosphere in the kitchens has always been postulating since the 12th and 13th of the age lunar men. Each person in the kitchen is dedicated to doing their part. From preparing ingredients to cooking, everything tastes very really smoothly and enthusiastically. When we organize an event and people come to participate, I feel happy and cheerful. I will try to promote it in the following years so that people from far away can come and join in the joy in Tenen. The enthusiasm and hospitality of Tenen people in general have created a warm and human atmosphere in the 2024 UJ Palace Festival. In the 2024 festival, free vegetarian meals and friendly accommodation not only support tourists, but also demonstrate the spirit of compassion and solidarity of Gaudai religion, making the festival complete and memorable. The Ho Chi Minh City Mobile Expressway project passes through the administrative boundary of Trang Bang Tao at length of 12 kilometers, and the Tao Party Committee and the People's Committee of Trang Bang Tao have directed the implementation of staff to carry out site clearing compensation for schedule. 
Jangbang town has three localities with land within the project area passing through 12 kilometers, namely Angton Road, Yellow Road, and Lopeng Commune. Jangbang town party committee has issued a document directing to speed up the site clearance progress of this project, and the town party committee smart mobilization committee has established a program the team to mobilize on the people in the area of Angton, Yellow, and Lopeng Road to propagate the state policies on project implementation, and currently a notice of land recovery has been issued to all affected households. As planned, on December the 18th of 2024, the Changbang Town Land Fund Development Center we begin to conduct surveying and counting in Angton Woods. Then it will deploy surveying and counting in Yalok and Lokhung Woods. Changbang Town is expected to complete the surveying and counting of land, groups, and structures on land to be recovered by October the 31st of 2024. Implementing the program to promote the sale of Vietnamese goods, bringing Vietnamese goods to rural areas. Since the beginning of the year, the Fatherland Run and social political organizations have coordinated to organize programs to bring Vietnamese goods to consumers such as Implementing the program to promote the sale of Vietnamese goods, bringing Vietnamese goods to rural areas. Since the beginning of the year, the Fatherland Branch and Social Political Organizations have coordinated to organize programs to bring Vietnamese goods to consumers such as Dead for Reunion, Dead of Love, Workers' Men, First Hygiene and Safety Men, Vietnamese River Rental Sales Point with the slogan, Vietnamese people prioritize using Vietnamese goods in industrial parts, cluster and water communes for workers to participate in shopping. In the first segment of 2024 long, called by tenant supermarkets, Corp My System in Tân Châu, Go Yêu, Châu Thành, Yung Châu and Tân Bình districts have conducted 50 from mobile sales trips with a total revenue of nearly 400 million Việt Nam Tung. In addition, Hong Yi Import Export Trade Technology Service Company Limited has made an average of 27 sales trips to remote areas every day with a total revenue of more than 2 billion Việt Nam dong per day. In response to warning about the fake information and scams about the workers going to Korea to work under the EPS program from the Overseas Labor Center, Ministry of Labor, World and Wellness, and Social Affairs of Vietnam, the Department of Information and Security recommends that the workers should carefully research labor export programs through official sources. Absolutely do not believe in advertisements or invitations that are promised to attractiveness but lack the legal basis. And you should only participate in labor sport programs through the company licensed by the Ministry of Labor, Warm Wellness and Social Affairs. The audience on September 16, 2024, in Bình Dương, the Ministry of Industry and Trade coordinated with the Provincial Bureau's Committee to organize a thematic seminar with the team promoting export potential and improving trade defense capacity. The seminar attracted more than 200 delegates, including local leaders, industry associations, and import export enterprises. Vietnam has currently signed 16 free trade agreements, or FTAs, opening up many great opportunities for businesses, especially in Bình Dương. However, businesses are facing the risk of being investigated for trade defense. It means there are an average of one part by anti-dumping and anti-avoidance investigations. Typically, the key good processing and export industry in Bình Dương, with more than 300 export enterprises, worth nearly 6 billion US dollars per month, is facing many difficulties due to anti-dumping losses from competitors. Regarding kitchen and bathroom cabinets, the U.S. side initiated a lawsuit regarding the issue of rot on the origin of goods. This case has been excluded by some enterprises so far, and data is also good. However, recently, those enterprises, some of those excluded, the U.S. continued to initiate anti-dumping losses on the issue of origin rot, making it quite difficult for enterprises to respond, comment, and explain. 
the Ministry of Industry and Trade recommends that enterprises should effectively use trade defense measures, cooperate closely with competent authorities, and develop reasonable export strategies. In particular, enterprises need to choose reputable partners and implement security measures such as deposits before shipping. For specific market areas, for example, the African market area, we need to pay close attention to payment stress and overcome them by investing in evaluating, thoroughly understanding partners, assessing the reputation of partners, and when signing contracts, we must be very strict and always require a deposit. The Ministry of Industry and Trade affirms that it will continue to accompany businesses in protecting their rights and sustainable development in the face of integration challenges, commits to continue guiding businesses and supporting explanations when facing losses, ensuring that Vietnamese businesses can compete fairly and overcome challenges in the process of integration and sustainable development. And that's all for today's TV News. Thank you for being with us and goodbye for now.